What's up everyone? Welcome back to another Poker House 2-5 live stream. In this video, you will see the next gen members play a pot against each other that is the biggest in our history. <laughs> First hand for me, and it's a good one, we've got pocket jellos. Frankie limps, Clark opens early position to 30. I decide to 3-bet here to 120, folds around to Clark, he makes a call. So we're heads up in position in a 3-bet pot, very first hand, and it comes 7-6-5 with 2 clubs. Clark checks to me, now I gotta decide whether to bet or check. Normally on a board like this I would check most of my range because it's gonna favor him way more than me. However, we were both early position, and pocket jacks in particular is a hand that needs much more protection. I would hate to allow a hand like a straight draw, flush draw, or any two over cards to see a free turn card, so I decide to bet $70 and he quickly makes a call. Turns a 6 of diamonds pairing the board, and Clark puts me all in. There is not much thought process here, I don't have too much behind to worry about it. I snap call thinking I have the best hand a majority of the time. He shakes his head, says he's in trouble. We're off to one run out, one run out only, and the river is the queen of hearts. We show and we see we were up against ace jack of hearts. Kind of an odd hand to turn into a bluff, but we scoop this one and take it down. This hand is 2, 5, 10, 20. Yes, the straddle and double straddle are both on here. We see under the gun plus 2, open it up to $60. And it folds to us in the big blind with ace king offsuit. We are coming in for the three bet and we're going to size up. We're out of position with a hand that wants to put money in now. I make it $300, which is really just 15 big blinds, considering the big blind is technically $20 in this hand. Under the gun plus two is not going anywhere. He makes the call and we're off to a flop heads up with over 600 already at stake. And the flop comes ace queen six with two spades. We hit with ace king, let's go. Gonna see that on the smaller size here as I would with all my holdings. I bet a little less than a third pot, $200. He makes the fold and we scoop a big one early. We have some great characters including Marshall who's gonna be a fan favorite in this episode. There's a limp from royalty to five. He raised up to $20 with pocket sixes. Willie in the blind calls pocket sevens. In the big blind with seven to six suited, I make the call as is royalty. So we're four ways to a flop which comes eight, four, ace, two spades. I check, royalty checks, and Marshall takes the betting lead. He puts out a bet of $30. Woodley makes the call. We've got a gut shot straight draw. I make the call, and royalty gets out of the way. The turn is a four of hearts. Not a good card for us. Woodley checks. I check, and thankfully, Marshall checks it back. He's letting us see a free river, which is the five of diamonds. Bang. Now, I'm trying to look very casual here as I flick in $100, about a half size pop bet, trying to get looked up by exactly what Marshall has, and he does make the call, Willie makes the fold. We show him the bad news though and scoop in a $400 pot. We're playing the stand-up game now, and we're playing 2-5-10. I wake up with ace-queen suited in early position and decide to put in a sneaky limp for $10. There's four more limps, I'm really hoping it doesn't limp around, and Woodley never fails to impress. He reopens the action to $75, folds back around to me, and I'm certainly going to be putting in this limp raise, not only to clear the field, but also to isolate Woodley in position with what's almost certainly the best hand. I raise it up to 225 everyone else folds, back onto Woodley, and he calls for 150 more. Mission accomplished, now we gotta go to battle on a flop, and it comes Jack-Jack-7 with two diamonds and a spade. Not a bad board for us with a backdoor flush draw and two over cards. I'm thinking I'm going to bet small on this once he checks to me. However, he doesn't check to me. He jams all in for $1,000. What the heck is going on? I actually go into the tank here because Woodley can just be so wide on this type of board with a flush draw, maybe even a pair of sevens, some gut shots, and obviously trip jacks is a possibility too. It's a stand-up game which makes it really hard because I want to sit down and I don't want to allow Woodley to get this one through on me. However, it's a lot of money to call off and I decide to just fold. Thank God I did because he flopped trip jacks on us and put max pressure on and we got away from this one. Folds to us in the low jack here, aka under the gun plus three. We've got queen jack offsuit and bump it up to 20. Marshall in the cutoff calls and Woodley in the small blind calls, the two loosest players at the table. Off to a flop three ways, which comes king jack three with two hearts. Woodley checks. We have a middling made hand here. We check. And Marshall bets $15. Woodley calls, and for less than a quarter pot size bet, we are sticking around with our pair, which could definitely be good against these two opponents. And as you can see, it is in this case off to a turn, which is one of the best turns in the deck. It gives us a non-flush two pair in the offsuit queen, but little do I know, Woodley just absolutely smashed his gutter. He checks, and given Marshall's player type, I elect to lay the trap and go for the check raise. Sure enough, 
Marshall continues for $45, and Woodley just calls, which looking back is pretty wild to me. It's a super juicy board. If I'm Woodley, I want to pump money into this pot right now before bad rivers come. However, Woodley's a magician, and he somehow knows that I'm coming in for the check raise myself. The trapper gets trapped. I raise to $200. Marshall calls and Woodley now jams for $742. What is happening in the moment? I don't know what Woodley would play this way that wouldn't just have check raised Marshall earlier. We've got a great hand on a draw heavy board versus the two loosest guys at the table. You guys can see the cards, I cannot. So I make the call, Marshall folds, and we are off to two rivers with $1,800 at stake. They are the seven of hearts, and the eight of diamonds and Woodley owns our soul. We have a very interesting pre-flop spot. We're still less than an hour into the stream. Clark raises under the gun to $20. Jack makes the call, which is pretty strong under the gun one. I'm assigning him a pretty tight range. He does have a very good hand, ace queen here. Ryan in the hijack puts in a three bet, his first three bet of the day, to $95. And Marshall, who's been very aggressive, cold calls the 95. It's on me with pocket nines and the big blind. What a spot. We've already chipped up to 1.8K, so we're already up $300 with a pretty big stack. I definitely don't want to get pocket nines in with Ryan here. I don't feel comfortable getting it in with Jello either. So uh, this is a pretty tough spot. I don't like it. I don't want to call and just set mind, which is a possibility. I mean, maybe some people like to call three bets here with pocket nines, and I'm sure that a lot of the times it's not going to get four bet. But I can't risk putting in ninety dollars and then having Clark or Jack four bet me and make me fold my pocket nine. So I'm not going to treat this as a set mind. I'm actually just going to fold, which is the best hand right now. And if we did go to a flop, it would have been a pretty good one of 7, 10, 10. Definitely would have felt comfortable to continue for at least one or two streets, but Marshall would have had trips and put us in a really bad spot. Glad we got away from this one. Let me know what you guys would have done pre-flop. Just a couple hands later, we look down at one pip worse, pocket eights, and there's a 10, 20, and a $40 straddle from Woodley on. So a triple straddle in play, started by Marshall, a fan favorite like I was telling you guys, he's awesome. And this is a tough spot for us. I'm going to go for a raise. I don't want to just limp in here. And because our big blinds are reduced with the straddles in play, I don't think we have to go a full 3x. I just raised to $100 over the $40 straddle. We see Marshall on the first straddle make the call with 8-7 suited. And Woodley gets in there with 9-3 off. I like the hands we're up against as we go to a flop of 10-7-4 two spades. Pretty good flop for our hand, only one over card. I'm putting a value and a protection bet. I make it $200 to go, which is about 60% of the pot. We see a call from Marshall's got a pair and some backdoor draws and Woodley gets out of the way. The turn is the five of hearts. Marshall picks up his straight draw and it's not the best card for my range. When he checks it over to me, I don't want to bet and get raised. So I check trying to get us a little bit closer to showdown and the river is the 10 of diamonds. I actually really like this river because it makes it less likely that he has a 10. And when he leads out for $325 here, I don't think too long about it before just sticking in the call. Everything's worked out the way I liked it. He put in a value bet with the worst hand and we win. Let's go. This is a very interesting one. We've got 10 8 of diamonds and open to $20. Full draw on the Woodley in the big blind. He's just coming back from the bathroom. And before he even looks at his cards, he tells the dealer he wants to raise while he's running back to his seat. And he blind raises to $75. And I decide to take the aggressive action, something I normally wouldn't be doing with 10 high. However, Woodley is blind here. I forward bet to $200. This allows us to really maintain control of the pot in position and also keep our range completely uncapped. He makes a call for $125 more, off to a flop, and it is a magnificent one. Jack 9 7 rainbow. We drill the absolute nutter butters on this flop. He checks. I bet small to $115, and he quickly makes a call. Turn is the 10 of clubs, so it brings in a backdoor flush draw and also brings a four liner out there. Unfortunate card because if he does have an eight, now we're likely chopping. And just like last hand against Woodley, he open shoves on this card. I sit up on my seat like, what did he just say? I am so confused. The graphics are wrong. I actually have about 950 behind, so this is well over the size of the pot. I double check my cards. Yep, we've got the straight. If he's got a higher straight, then screw me, I guess. I call. And we see that the 10 of clubs was the actual worst card in the deck because not only did Woodley make the same hand as us, he's also free rolling us with a flush draw too. He asks how many times I want to run it. It's a $2,500 pot and I'm chopping at best. I honestly have no clue what to do. Let's run it twice, I guess. River 
For the first board is a black four, but bless my soul, it's a spade. No club on the second river, please, dealer. No, it is a club, and Woodley drills the backdoor flush on us, and we are going to get quartered in this massive pot. Woodley strikes again. We're playing the stand-up game here, a classic, and we've got pocket jellos in the big blind. Marshall under the gun plus one opens the 20. Woodley under the gun plus three calls the 20. Our familiar two opponents gets to us. We're three betting. We make it $110, and Marshall comes in with the four bet to 300. Woodley folds, and it's on us. Now, normally facing a four bet, we're not feeling super great with our jacks. We are out of position. If we call, we're going to have to navigate the rest of this hand out of position. However, it's Marshall. We know he's playing a little loose today. So I think Jax can, for the first time probably in my career, get into the five bet jam value range, which don't expect Jax to be there too often. In this case, I think they're there. So I rip it for almost $1,000, and Marshall does not think too long before calling this five bet jam with king 10 of spades. Happy to see that we're getting it in good, but we've gotta to get to these five cards. We're going to two runouts here. First one, we bink top set and coast to a victory, allowing us to sit down in the stand-up game. The second one, we see a disastrous flop of king seven, nine with two spades, the 10 of clubs turn, and the five of spades river leaves us with a chop pot, but very happy we stood our ground and got it in good with the correct play here. Nice hand, Rosie. As you saw, the stand-up game is still going. The action, well, it brings craziness here playing the stand-up game. There is a raise to $20 from Royalty. It called from Marshall, Tricky Fish, Woodley, and saw me in the big round with Ace-8 suited. I'm very happy calling, trying to hit a big flop, and big flop, we do hit. Flop comes. 792 with two diamonds. We flop Nut Flush Draw and Royalty. Bets $45, and Marshall puts in a raise to $100. So we checked these two players. Now it's gone bet, re-raise. All right, I know that Marshall can get out of line here, and we have a monster draw. So I would hate to just call this 100, and then on the turn, check, have Marshall jam, and have to fold my huge draw to him. And I'm also happy to get this hand in. So against Marshall, against someone who can just have one pair like he does right now, just kind of messing around, he could be putting in a feeler bet, try to see where he's at with his 10. I actually decided to go for a very aggressive, pretty non-standard four bet flop. And I put in a re-raise to $400, basically saying, hey guys, if you wanna see the next card, you're gonna put your whole stack in. And both the players snap folded over to me. So we win with ace high, get a 10 and a seven to fold. That's a pretty big win. And we're on to the next hand. This hand, we pick up ace king and decide to sneaky limp under the gun with this crazy action table. Ryan opens it up to 35 and Marshall now three bets him to 150. That's just what we were looking for. When it folds back around to me, BAM! I'm all in for $500. Ryan folds, but Marshall thinks I'm full of it. He knows his A7 is well ahead of my limp jamming range and makes a call to punish me. Off to one run out, let's see what happens. Jack 9A is a flop. Marshall picks up a gutter ball to go along with his pair and he must be absolute trash at bowling because he immediately finds the gutter on the turn. We're drawn dead to a queen to make a better straight or a seven to chop. Let's bank one time dealer and bang! We find the four of hearts on the river, we lose. Alrighty, second round of stand up is on the way and we pick up 10 eight of spades in early position and open to 30 over a $10 straddle. Rosie knows I'm wider than I should be here and he three bets me to $90. Now this is a spot, I've been doing this more and more often, I'm happy, I'm incorporating it into my game. Going in for three bets here pretty linearly, meaning with all the hands I want to play in the cutoff, not calling them versus a raise. The reason is because we don't want the button getting in there and then we don't have position. And we also don't want the blinds seeing me as dead money and coming in for the squeeze and forcing me off hands that I want to play. Folds back to me, I'm getting a pretty good price with a hand that can make some pretty disguised strong hands. I'm not ready to give this one up just yet. I call for 60 more. Out of position, calling a rosy three bet. It's a bold strategy, let's see what happens. The flop comes queen eight deuce with two diamonds and jack checks. We have top pair, great kicker, backdoor flush draw, we see bet, 75. I'm ahead of enough hands to peel a turn card and see what he has in store. I call and the turn is the lovely eight of hearts. We drill it, time to stack my buddy now. I check. Now for us, we pick up the flush draw to go along with top pair. 
We like this card. We continue for 225 and Jack rips it all in in my face for 616. This could be the biggest next gen on next gen pot ever played. Rosie is flabbergasted. He says to me, if you somehow have an eight here, we are no longer friends. He thinks about it for a bit, but does make the call. I say, sorry, buddy. Guess we aren't friends anymore because, you know, I've got trips. He looks defeated. I'm ready to stack him. We run it once for the content and the river comes off the six of hearts. The backdoor flush doesn't seem too scary until I hear Rosie say, you aren't gonna like this, and flips over king queen of hearts. We get stacked once again and Rosie gets my chips. And although I look composed, don't worry, I beat him up in the parking lot later. Have you guys ever seen me bet $1,000 preflop? Well, I think you're about to. There is an under the gun raise to $60. There is an under the gun re-raise from Marshall to $200. And there's a call from Willie to $200. Yes, if you want to play in the best action games, join our Discord, link it below to get access to sign up for these live streams. Okay, back to me. I've ace queen suited in the hijack versus Woodley, who we all know who Woodley is at this point. Very action player, calling very wide. Marshall, who you guys are learning about, very action player, raising wide. And then we have Ryan, who is, I would say, a pretty standard poker range, knows what he's doing. And it's on me with a very good hand. I've got the very top of my range, but the bottom of my cold four betting range, like ace jack suited, I'm fine just folding here. But with a hand as good as ace queen suited, with people standing up, I think that a cold four bet is necessary. And we're gonna put in for a sizing that's gonna put them to test for their stack. We don't want pocket eights, pocket sevens, having an easy decision here. We make it $1,000 to go. And that gets some heads to turn at the table. We get some very quick folds from everyone except for Willie, who had the worst hand, and we put him into the tank. Willie, more than anyone that I know that plays as high of VPIP as him, really understands where he's at a lot of the time. So Willie doesn't want to give up his 50% equity. He doesn't think I'm netted here, which I'm not actually. If only I had aces or kings when Willie decides to call here, he just drawing dead. But this time, like I say, he's in a very good spot. But thankfully, the 1000 does work. Willie eventually relinquishes his hand, and we take down $467 of profit without seeing a flop with only ace queen. This hand, we have the Rockets. Pocket aces in the cutoff. Here we go. Under the gun straddles on for 10. Under the gun plus two limps. Jack under the gun plus three raises to 60. The hijack calls 60. We just love seeing money being pumped into this pot before it even gets to us with aces. We come in for the three bet to $200. And Marshall comes in out of nowhere with the small blind cold call with a7 offsuit. Marshall is the homie. Thankfully, he does because everyone else folds. And we get to go to a flop with our aces. Heads up in position. That flop comes 10-5-3 with two clubs and Marshall checks. I see bet small like we would with all our holdings here basically. Make it 175. Marshall though is a non-believer. He sticks around with the ace high call. And we're off to a turn with almost 900 at stake which is an offsuit 7. Marshall checks again. And it's time to make a more sizable bet here and charge. We make it $500 over half pot. And Marshall finds the call again with his now second pair. So we're off to a river with 1,900 in the middle. And it's the nine of clubs. Not the river we want to see. The board gets super connected. The front door flush gets there. So when Marshall checks, I think we're ready for showdown. I check it back. Am baffled to see the hand he's here with. A7 offsuit. But nevertheless, we take down a massive pot with pocket aces. Let's go. This hand there's an open to 20 in one call and we see Clark squeezing the cutoff to 110. We wake up with the ladies on the button. We've been beaten down multiple times tonight and you know me and the ladies have a love-hate relationship. My heart's been broken before but I'm giving them one more chance. I put in that 4 bat to 280, folds around a Clark who without a thought jams all in for around $700. Believe it or not, I'm not really loving this. He seems so confident in the jam but... My hand is just way too strong to fold with this much money invested already. I call and he asks me to run it twice. I say yes sir and he flips over ace king. It's a coin flip, let's hope we are on the good side. First flop comes clean, turns a 5 and rivers a 10. Feels so nice to win the first one. We're free rolling the second board, flop comes out clean once again, turn is a 4 clubs giving Clark a flush draw too. If we can scoop this pot, it would be a huge moral boost and a well-needed double up. He's got plenty of outs though, but thank the poker gods, the river is the 10 of diamonds. We scoop in this pot and hope to get things moving in the right direction now. Let's go. 
Nice hand at Jello. The boys have made an amazing comeback. But for me, guys, I've been rolling. I've been cruising through this entire session, just continually scooping in chips. And now we're in another big spot. There's a hijack raise of $75 from Ryan with seven deuce. Obviously, this trial's in play like it's been a lot of tonight. Marshall gets in the mix with 8-7 offsuit in the cutoff. Wooly calls a small blind of $75. And we're in the big blind with ace king. We have to squeeze here. We're never flatting because there's so much dead money in the middle. I think now just about a sizing here. Um, I want to go at least 4x. I make it $400 to go. And Clark with pocket queens right behind me re-rips it, but it's for less. It's for $150. Obviously, if I knew he was going to jam, I would have just called and allowed him to raise to 150 which is a, a legal min raise. And then everyone called the 150 and then I just jam over the top with, with ace-king. But that's not what happened. Unfortunately, pocket queens and I are going to be heads up in a side pot. Oh wait, we still have Wooly to get through. He has not folded yet, the other two half. He's in the small bundle of pocket eights, really in the tank, and he's been crushing the session. As you can see, he's got 4.4K, so he's got a very big stack. He really wants to set mine versus me. He wants to stack me, obviously, so he makes the call. Even though he really didn't want to, Pre-flop. So at this point, I know he doesn't have a very good hand. I'm actually putting him on a middling pocket pair, just like this. And when the flop comes 9-5-7, I'm hating my life as a middling pocket pair has smashed this board. Willie, who's in the middle of a bite, bets $325. I mean, come on. Does this like scream every single hand I play with Ace King? Um, I just think that I cannot call here. I just don't think it's a good spot to float because we're going to face more action on the turn. We could be dead to set right now. We don't have hearts. We just relinquish. We also have Clark, who's already all in, which makes it less likely that Willie's going to bluff. The turn is a 10 of hearts. And the river was the king of spades. So I stand up just in agony as if we would have got it all in pre-flop. I definitely would have won. But of course, Willie makes things hard for our life. And the first hand of the night, it doesn't go our way actually is the last 10 of night. Let's see how much we cashed out for. In for 1500, out for 2680. Frankie's good at poker. In for 1500, out for 2545. In for 2300, out for 1325. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace. Peace.